so guys, for our today's lesson will be statistical mechanics and its three postulates. So this would be a continuation of our discussion last meeting about statistical mechanics, okay? So our first postulate was the extension of microscopic laws and Gibbs. The first postulate of statistical thermodynamics states that the time average of a mechanical variable m in the thermodynamic system of interest is equal to ensemble average of m as the limit of a which is infinite or infinity. And I know that we all know here now already that an infinite number is a sequence of natural numbers that never ends. Sana all never ends, no? Charot. Okay, let's go back. This law states that the average value of a mechanical variable taken from the ensembles of microstates matches the mechanical value predicted by classical thermodynamics. So long as the number of microstates A is an exceedingly high number. That's why it's infinite. The first postulate of statistical thermodynamics can be extended to arrive at the Gibbs postulate, which relates the energy of said microstates to internal energy of a system as calculated by classical thermodynamics. Okay, our postulate one says that statistical mechanics now is an extension of microscopic laws plus the Gibbs free energy law, okay? Now, what does Gibbs postulate states? Again, we all know already that Gibbs postulate relates that internal energy, of course the U, of a system determined by thermodynamics to the energy ensemble energy, or the letter E, determined by statistical mechanics. Okay, this postulate also says that Internal energy is equal to the average ensemble energy. And this also says that the average energy of the A copies in the ensemble is given by the following equation. And our E, of course, here is expressed in sigma notation or simply the summation, okay? Wherein E is equal to 1 over A times the sigma or the sum of a i times e i okay what is e i now e i here is h v times n 1 to the i plus n 2 to the i plus n 3 to the i plus so on and so forth since it's infinite okay so, hindi na natin pahihirapan yung sarili natin to compute using this equation but I want you guys to familiarize it at least so we can use it in future references lalo na kapag we are doing our thesis and we have to explain and there are some computations there at least you are familiar with the equations okay? Biophysics is very huge and Computing alone examples of problems from these equations would took up so much of our time. So, it's up to you na to learn how to compute this. But in our subject, we will just familiarize it, okay? Through the Gibbs postulate, the average ensemble energy can be used to define the thermodynamic values of Helmholtz energy or A, entropy or S, pressure as mol p, and thermodynamic potential as mu through the following relationship. Okay, Helmholtz energy is equal to internal energy minus temperature times entropy, while pressure, on the other hand, is equal to negative change in Helmholtz energy over change in volume. And here is equal to the number of molecules. Three again is temperature. Okay. On entropy, it is equals to negative change in Helmholtz energy over change in temperature. Okay. Again, and here is number of molecules. And then V is volume 
Okay, while mu or thermodynamic potential is equal to change in Helmholtz energy over the change in number of molecules. Then TV, T again here is temperature and V is volume. Okay, okay let's go to postulate number two. Principle of equal probabilities. The second postulate of statistical thermodynamics states that for an ensemble representative of an isolated system, the systems of the ensemble are distributed uniformly. All states consistent with the specified microcanonical system will occur with equal probability. This is otherwise known as the principle of equal a priori probabilities. For example, in two microcanonical systems with three particles capable of occupying a quantum level or small n, with small n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. There is an equal probability of the first system occupying the states wherein n1, state that stands for the first system, is equal to 1, n2 is equal to 0, n3 is equal to 2, as there is the second system occupying the states wherein n1 is equal to 6, n2 is equal to 4, n3 is equal to 9. Across the distribution for each system, there is an indiscriminate occupation of each quantum state, which is just likely as any other. Okay? We're in postulate number three. On the other hand, is entropy. We are very much familiar with entropy. Naman, ano? The entropy of an ensemble of systems satisfying postulates one and two. Okay? Those are the postulates of statistical mechanics. Okay, to sum it up so that we can understand it, let's put it into easier words. Okay, postulate one is about large number of particles or molecules. Where in these particles or molecules, there is a continuous state of motion. That's why it's infinite because the motion of the particles in that ensemble is continuous. Postulate two the total number of particles are constant if the system is indicated, okay? And postulate 3, the total energy of the system is constant. Okay, it is easier to understand than the first ones, okay? Now, let's go to permutations, okay? You're going to love these permutations because it is an easier topic, okay? What is permutation? A permutation is an arrangement of objects in a definite order. The members or elements of sets are arranged here in a sequence or linear order. For example, the permutation of set A is 1, 6, is 2. So, meron siyang dalawang set. Okay? Yung permutation ng set A natin dito is may dalawang set. Ano yun? Ano yung dalawang yun? That is 1, 6, and 6, 1. So, in just this set of A, we can uh, create two permutations, okay? That is 1, 6, and 6, 1. As you can see, there are no other ways to arrange the elements of set A. So, permutations here is all about arrangements. Okay, let's take another example. How about B? B is equal to 7, 8, 9, for example, okay? Our answer is 6. So, in this set B, we can make 6 permutations. And what are those 6 permutations? Those are 789, 798, 897, 879, 978, and 987. Okay, those are the 6 permutations that we can create. Okay, so it's just like how we do probabilities. No? We, can we have just to um, rearrange the numbers and count how many sets we can make with that three numbers that is given though that is 789 okay this is easy lang no so we get naman this permutation topic okay let's move on to another which is the boltzmann distribution okay boltzmann distribution is a probability function used in statistical physics to characterize state of a system of particles with respect to temperature and energy the system can exist in several states. However, the chance of being in certain subset of states is higher than the other. Okay, let us familiarize this equation so that we can use it in future references. Okay, because this equation is used in spectroscopy. 
because you can use it to calculate the ratio of the number of the molecules in the upper energy level to the number in the lower level. This is important because, for example, in the absorption of spectroscopy, if there are a lot of molecules in the lower level, there will be plenty available to be promoted to the upper level, which will make the corresponding line in the absorption spectrum more intense. Now, let's look at the form of equation we have here on your screen. First, we have the ratio of the degeneracies of the upper and the lower energy levels okay this one take note this one we are talking about that okay that is the the that degeneracy okay remember the degeneracy of an energy level is the number of distinct states within that level so if there's only one state with that energy the degeneracy g or g this one, the degeneracy, is 1. Okay? Now, look at the exponential factor. Remember that d exponent, this is the exponent, is the thing that has a big effect. And take note to the negative sign. So, increasing the magnitude of the exponent will decrease the magnitude of an upper over an n lower we are in a position to say that it's really important to know the parts of this equation because they are the variables in the exponent and these variables are the energy difference delta because there are variables in the exponent again here Okay, let's erase na lang. Okay, we have the variables we have here in the exponent. This is important because uh, these variables are the energy difference, delta E, which is the energy difference between the upper and the lower levels, and the temperature T which is expressed in Kelvin if it means that if you increase okay let's talk about this temperature T if you increase the magnitude of delta E the magnitude of N upper over N lower decreases okay this one if you increase this the value of the N upper and N lower will decrease. Okay? Because why? Okay? Because of the negative sign in the And that means that increasing T has the opposite effect. It increases the ratio. All this corresponds to what you would expect intuitively. A bigger energy gap means you have less molecules in the higher energy level okay but higher temperature means you have more molecules okay i hope you have learned something and you have familiarized this equation always remember that boltzmann is constant and the boltzmann constant is kg equals to 1.2 381 times 10 raised to negative 23 joules. Okay. Now, let us talk about the partition function. What does the partition function tell us? The partition function is a measure of the volume occupied by the system in a phase space. Basically, it tells you how many microstates are accessible to your system in a given ensemble. This can be easily seen starting from the microcanonical ensemble. Now let's talk about how we derive partition function from Boltzmann distribution law. Okay? The final equation of Boltzmann distribution law was Ni over N. Okay? Equals to G I E raised to beta E I over the summation 
of G I E raised to negative B E I K. Okay, we have talked about the degeneracy energy level, and we have found out that the description of beta here is constant and the energy levels here okay is also constant so we have derived this equation so this equation is the partition function okay and it was given by a scientist named fowler okay so this is the partition function and in some in some books it is derived as q or big q and some are small q and in some books x but here we are just going to use q okay so in short our partition function equation would be q is equal to the summation of g i e raised to negative beta e i okay this is our equation for partition function of course this equation gives us the summation summation of the energy states over all available states and okay this may this function now is the partition function of a of a dimensionless quantity and it depends on the molecular weight as well as molecular volume okay it depends on the molecular weight and it, its molecular volume or temperature and of course several other functions and partition function can be represented in the form of several thermodynamic we all we know this already diba functions like internal energy entropy work and pressure okay, and as well as also the gibbs energy free energy okay and even uh, the heat capacity so there are some of our more dynamic functions with the help of which can be expressed in terms of partition function there are so many um equation we can derive from this simple equation of partition function okay generally speaking this partition function explain as how particles are distributed among various energy levels and it measure the available energy level so with the help of this particular equation we can find out how several particles is supposed to be existing in the n number of particles in a system okay so those number of particles are distributed among several energy levels okay that can be obtained or can be quantitatively found out using this partition equation that we have so it is very important that you remember this one key okay? function from Boltzmann distribution you can also use this equation in identifying microscopic properties of individual particles and the macroscopic properties of whole system and the particle function this can also be defined as the sum of probability factors of various energy levels okay so we can also use this partition fun fu function this partition function if we are considering several number of particles okay for example the partic particles and how they perform different types of motion per individual particles okay imagine that a particle is moving on a zigzag motion okay um imagine we have a diatomic particle here a diatomic has two atoms okay imagine how does how it moves diba okay and okay it moves in a rotational motion okay and it rotates of course in its axis okay 
the motion and the electronic motion of it is due to a several electronic factors so the energy associated with the total energy will be the sum of all this type of energy factors that can be found here okay so we can write or derive some of the equation from this partition function okay now i want you to do yourself a favor on our remaining time try to do some research on how you can use this equation to calculate the probability of finding a molecule in a particular energy state enjoy the rest of the day bye